I remember right, we, we got to this point where we found this uh, 6x squared plus 6x minus 18, right? Because we saw on our calculator two-thirds, I'm sorry, negative two-thirds and positive a half were zero. So we knew x minus negative two-thirds was a factor. We did the division. We found that part right there, right? And then we saw that one half was also a factor. So we went x minus a half, and then we took the division of this one, and we divided out, we divided it by this x minus a half, and we ended up with this right there from our synthetic division, right? So we got that 6x squared plus 6x minus 18. Now we're looking at that and we're thinking, hey, this is a quadratic. I can, I can, uh, I can factor this. But notice each of those, I could take a 6 out of each of those. You know what? So let's, let's take a 6 out before I even try this. x squared plus x minus 3. And then that'll make, and let me put the 6 in front. That'll make this factorization much, much easier there, won't it? So I go, oh wait, that doesn't even factor. I'm stuck. Never mind. Okay. So I know I have rational zeros. So I set this thing equals zero. I'm finding x-intercept. Okay. At negative two-thirds, I have one at a half. And then I have some here. Okay. And what I do on that, unfortunately, is I either complete the square or make sure. Either complete the square. I thought I pulled my mic loose there. Or I uh, do the quadratic formula. It seems like a lot of you guys enjoy the quadratic formula. So I'll go ahead and with that one. Negative B. So minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And that ends up being 1 plus 12, square root of 13, all over 2. Guess what? There's my other two zeros. So I have those two zeros. There's another zero. There's another zero. So that was my four. Um, let me go back. See if you can see it on this uh, image bay here. Okay, so this, this one right here is if I remember it said, uh, let's see, negative 1 uh, minus root 13 is all over 2, right? Oops. Divide by 2. There we go. Oh, that's wrong. Okay, what was that again? Negative. Make sure I punch that in. Negative one minus square root. Oh gosh, square root. All of that divided by two. Enter. There we go. Negative. I must have entered it wrong the first time. Sorry about that. Okay. So there's negative one minus root thirteen all over two. Okay. So you see that it's irrational. This is negative 6, that's, ne that's scientific notation for 0. Negative 6 times 10 to the negative 12, your calculator is doing its best job to represent. That's actually 0, right? Negative, 10, negative 6 times 10 to the negative 12, so negative point zero 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 blah, 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 6, right? Okay, and then this point right up here, that's your um, negative 1 plus root the 13 all over 2, okay? So now you know all four of those. This is a, a fourth degree polynomial which has four um, possible roots, right? And in the complex numbers, it will have four possible. That's the fundamental theorem of, of algebra. Okay, so we're, we're done with that one now. Why don't we uh, kind of go back to here and do, um, you know, there's a good problem here in, in your textbook. Let me see if I can bring this up here. Okay, so this one, this one's number 46. So this is asking, uh, use the graph to shorten the list of possible rational zeros, then find all the real zeros of the function. So this is kind of a similar process. 
um, as well. So we want to list list all the possible rational zeros. Okay. So number one, what are the possible zeros? Possible rational zeros. Possible rational zeros. Okay, so you're taking all these factors of 16, right? So 116, 8, 2, 4, and 4, all over factors of that negative 3, so which is 1 and 3. So plus minus 16, let's do them all over 3 first. Plus minus 8 over 3. Plus minus uh, 2 over 3. Plus minus 4 over 3, right? Now I want to do them all over, because your other option for the denominator Besides 3 is 1, right? 3 times 1. So plus minus 16 over 1. Plus minus the 8 over 1. Plus minus 2 over 1. Plus minus 4 over 1. Okay. Cross off any repeats. I don't see any repeats there. And now, um, if you're doing this on your on a TI-89, you'd punch it in. You'd see, you'd see this graph right here, wouldn't you? All right? And they say, okay, I got these possibilities. It looks like I'm money right there at 2. It looks like I'm money right there at 4, right? Well, if I am, when I do this, okay, let's take the negative 3x cubed, 20x squared, negative 36x plus 16, right? When I do this, I should get a remainder of 0 if 2 is truly a 0. Hey, it works, right? And it leaves us with negative 3x squared plus 14x minus 8. That means, so we're trying to find all the possible zeros. All the possible zeros. So we're, we're breaking this thing down, right? And we use that graph to shorten the process. Okay. So we know x minus k. What was our k? k was 2. We know that's a factor. We put our answer that we just got right here. Because we know we know that quotient, that quotient, uh, I'm sorry, that quotient times our divisor gives us our original dividend right up above it, right? Quotient times our divisor is going to give us that original dividend. All right, so now we're breaking, we're breaking this thing down, right? And you're looking at that, and you're like, oh, geez, well, I could I could either go through and try and figure out um, what this factors into, and I can go like this, and it's 3x, x, and kind of play with that for a minute. Or, you know what, I'm just going to use that 4 right there. Because it looks like it's a money point. I'm going to use that 4. I'm going to use that negative 3x squared plus 14x minus 8, because I know, you know what, that, that thing's got to have that. It's got to be a zero, right? So let's check it. It works, right? So that would be negative 3x plus 2. So you actually know this is negative 3x plus 2. Um, in fact, let me write it the other way. So we know one of the factors is x minus k. That 4, because the 4 worked, right? And then what's left? What's left? Right here, right? That negative 3x plus 2. Negative 3x plus 2. So that kind of did that that last factorization for us. Now we're finding the zeros. We're finding the y-intercepts. Of course, we've already identified them, it uh, looks like. But this one, negative 3x plus 2, looks like that one's going to be your 2 thirds there once you solve that for equal to 0. Okay? There are all three of your zeros. That's a pretty good, pretty good little problem there. Um, we're going to stop right there. It looks like uh, for now. Thank you.